Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, so this is part two of our .NET full stack series. So in the previous video, we have discussed about what is Web API and what is a REST API and what we are going to build in this series. So if you have not watched that video, so I will highly recommend you guys to go ahead and watch the part one and then you can continue with this part two. So before starting the video, so let me ask you a question like if you are someone who really wants to like who love to write maintainable, testable and flexible code, right? So if your answer to that is yes, then this is the correct place where you are right now. Because today I'm going to deep dive into what is clean architecture, a software design pattern, which has really gained a lot of popularity in recent year and to be very specific in the .NET ecosystem. So this is how the clean architecture looks like. Okay. This is also known as onion architecture or hexagonal architecture you might have heard. So basically it's a software design principle, which promotes the separation of concern and loosely coupling between the different components of your application. What it tells, right? Basically it allows, it always asks you to put all your business logic at the center of your application okay and uh, whatever your application kind of logic will be layer like outer around it okay so everything will be revolved around this domain logic whatever you have so let's first try to understand this particular layer okay so if you see in the center we have domain layer okay so this is the innermost layer and this guy contains the core business logic and the entities of your application like for example we are creating a blog website so it will have all the entities like blog user the comments Okay. And whatnot. While outer to this domain layer, we have this application layer and this layer serves as an mediator between your domain layer and the outer layers. Okay. So basically it coordinates the flow of data and handles all your business services. Okay. Which we will see when we will try to create service and do the application logic there. While if I go more down this blue one, right, this is nothing but your infrastructure layer. And this guy includes all the implementation of your external dependencies. Like for example, you have your DB context, right? So as we are using entity framework, so we will have DB context file and whatnot. So all everything related to the database, it will be part of this particular infrastructure. And not just that, for example, you have any external services, like for example, if the user is logged in successful, so you want to send an email. So all those kind of dependencies will be there inside this infrastructure layer. Okay. So once we create the folder structure, I will explain you what all files will be sitting inside this particular layer. Okay. And the last but not the least, we have here the web UI, or you can say the presentation layer where we will have the API endpoints will be created over here. Okay. So this is the outermost layer and this is mostly responsible for handling the user interactions. Okay. So whenever the API calls come, this is what it gets hit first and then it goes inwards. Okay. So this is how this architecture look like in term of diagram and I've explained to you about each and everything what this layer will do. So this was just the theory around what is clean architecture and what are the different different layers. And trust me guys, I know a lot of people don't like theory, but theory is very important when you're trying to apply for a new job, if you want to give any interview, right? So this is very important, right? At that point of time. And that's the reason that I am trying to include few theories as well around whatever we are going to do in that video. Okay. So now let's go to the actual folder structure implementation. So for that, uh, so let me tell you guys, I will be using VS code to do my development. And if you don't know how to use VS code to do .NET coding and all that. So let me tell you a video which can help you to get things started. I'm talking about here. If you see, I have already created because I know that um, in future there will be a request because in Mac, you cannot do development by using Visual Studio. It's become very difficult for a Mac user to, to use Visual Studio, to be honest. So what I did, right, I shifted myself to use VS Code completely. So this is what the video I was talking about. Uh, seamless shift mastering .NET development on VS Code. So you can watch this video. It's a 17 minute video. This will really help you to do the setup in your uh, um, local environment, like local. Uh, if you Even if you're using Windows, right, it doesn't matter. You can still use VS code to do the development. So I will highly recommend you guys to go ahead and watch this video and then maybe you can start what I, what I will be doing now. So now considering that you have already watched that VS code setup thing. So now what I'll do, I'll create a new folder here, angular blog YT. Let me open up this inside a terminal and I want to open my VS code inside this folder. So this is what I did right now. So now I have, okay, let me delete this. This is not required. So let me delete this. Yes. So this is what my LMT folder will look like in VS code. Okay. So if you have set up everything, all you need to do, right? If you're using Mac users, so you have to press shift command NP 
and then you will get all this option so for windows user it should be control shift p okay and then you have to search for dotnet project okay so click on this dotnet project and i want to create a web api project so this is what i will select from here okay and then i'll have to give a name to my application so always know that i know this is what i used to follow for example now my folder name is angular blog yt and i want to design the layer so remember we had domain then we had application infra and presentation so what i'll do right first i have to create my first web project so i will say that as my api project okay so a lot of people do like this so for example this is your angular application so they say angular blog dot api okay but for me it is already a self explanatory that i'm inside our angular blog project so this is my api so this is what i will be following so api is what my project name is and then i will choose a directory let me just go here and i will create a new folder called as src and inside this src i'll put my api project okay and let's hit on create so this will create the api project inside src okay now let me do uh, i have to create another so if you if you go and see the diagram what we had here so now we have this web ui which is my api project now i have to create domain application and infrastructure so now i will be creating the class libraries for all these three layers okay so again i'll do the something similar command shift p select the new project now i have to choose a class library so i'll select a class library from here and then let's give it a name as my domain okay and hit enter and let's choose the directory again i'll choose the src and click open and this will create the project okay so now you can see i have my api and domain okay let me do the similar thing for the others as well again let's choose class library okay and let's give it a name as my infra okay infrastructure uh, i hope the spelling is correct yes and then choose a directory again i'll choose the src click open and create the project okay let's do the last one which is hmm, which is the application okay so again class library application hit enter choose the directory and i'll choose src and click open okay and this will create the project all right so now this is how the folder structure looks like for me so i have api application domain and infrastructure so if you want to create a test project okay okay so that also you can do right so let me just show you that as well okay you can select the dotnet project you can search for test project i want to use xunit framework and give the name as application dot unit test so i'll say unit unit test and i can hit enter and i can choose the directory but this time i have to create a new directory so let me create a new folder test create and just select it okay and now this will create a, a project for me which is the application dot unit test okay so you can have uh, another project right so for example uh, a lot of people write integration test as well so again we can do the same thing so you can select for the test project again so this is the unit test project and then you can give the name as application dot functional test let's see functional test so that's also you can do okay functional you have an integration and what and whatnot so let's do that as well again we are not going to focus on uh, testing in this series but yeah if time permits then we will see like how we can also write some unit test cases okay and this is how what we get as a folder structure so now we have a angular blog yt as a folder on the top and then we have created our layers which is domain i have my application infrastructure and api which is my presentation layer okay and for the test cases you can already see the test cases will be inside this suppose you want to write test case for the application layer which you will write most of the time because that's where the business logic will reside so that's what you can do over here okay so now you can see that this is doesn't look like uh, it doesn't gives you the feel of uh, visual studio so now if you have installed everything successfully right so you might get something here on the top let me just zoom this a bit i hope this is okay now so here you can see you have this solution explorer here if i open up this right so this is what you will see something uh, like visual studio so this is just give you some look and feel so this is your application like this is the class library and this is the actual web api project so you can see that okay and this is what you got as a folder structure 
and now in the upcoming video right i will be telling you about what all files will reside inside this each layer okay for example what is the responsibility of domain application infrastructure and the api and trust me guys this is going to be the very interesting video what i will be discussing with what each and every layer consists okay and we will try to set up everything from scratch okay so that's it from this today's video so this is what i really wanted to teach you in this video that clean architecture i know it might seems to be more daunting at the first but uh, once you grasp the core concept right it can truly transform the way you like design and develop application okay so because it really uh, promotes the best practices which help you to write maintainable and like testable and flexible codes as you have already seen uh, by its folder structure okay so that's all for today folks if you have any questions or need any further clarification feel free to drop them in the comments below and uh, till the time happy coding see you guys in the next video